What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today, subreddit is r slash choosing beggars. Alright, first story up is called, Fake Ghosting Friend Who Needs a Friend Only When She Needs Something. I had a so-called friend who only called or showed up every few months. Keep in mind, I knew that she only messaged me when she needed something. For the most part, I did nothing for her, so it did not bother me. This time, she called with a, Hi, have you forgotten me? You have not said hi in a while, and I wanted to see how you were doing. I replied with, Hey, same here. I haven't heard from you in a few months. How's the new apartment and living with your boyfriend finally? She said all was swell and that they were getting along fine. She asked if she could hang out since she needed a break from her boyfriend, and since I live alone and have three empty bedrooms, I could make some room for her. Ha 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 ha. I asked her, uh, does your boyfriend know that you're coming and I don't feel comfortable with you staying at the house. I don't want to cause issues with your boyfriend. She said it was alright and that her boyfriend was working and knows that she hangs out with friends and family. She spent the weekend, ate my food, did her laundry, and then the reason of her visit came out. She told me that she was looking for a car and that she needed help from me to find it. I am car savvy, but not a mechanic by any means. I said I would look for something similar to see what she was looking for. After a week, she said that she found the perfect one and sent me the info. I said, it looks good, but she might want to take it to a mechanic to check it out. She then asked me, let's hang out at your house again. I again asked her about her boyfriend and she said that it was fine. When she got to my house, she immediately started talking about the car and that she needed help and that she would really appreciate it if I helped her out. I asked with what? She said, money is tight. I would like to see if you can contribute to my car fund. I said, I honestly do not have any money to spare. I pay all of my bills and I am simply trying to save for things that I want. I suggest you do that as well. She stopped talking about it, and the next day, she went home without saying a word. I did not hear from her for a month, and she finally texted me again, this time being really pushy. Would you do me the favor of taking me to look at a car? I asked, when? And she said, Sunday. I told her, I have family things to take care of. She then asked, how about the weekend after? I asked, uh, where is it? She said, In a city two hours away, drive to take me there and look at the car. Make sure that it is good to buy and then I would buy it. I told her, that's too far. That would mean I would lose my whole Sunday, my only day off, to take care of things at my home. I asked her, why doesn't your boyfriend go with you? She said, he uses Sundays to clean the apartment, wash clothes, and shop for food. By then, I really got the picture. I replied, well, so do I. I have not felt comfortable with you staying at my house and now want me to drive two hours each way to help you with a car. That is boyfriend territory. Ask your boyfriend to do those things with you. She then said, I showed my mom and brother and sister what you said. They all think it was kind of messed up that you as a friend won't help when you are my friend who specializes in cars and I rely on my friends. If you don't think you can help me, then I don't think we can be friends. I replied, well then, uh, you and your family take care. I have not heard from her since. I do not need friends like that. Ow! What kind of- Ow! Uh, that poor boyfriend though, like that guy's freaking getting played. Alright, this story's called, Offered to help out roommate, now he wants me to pay for all of his expenses. So, this all really starts two years ago, but to summarize, my significant other's little sister's boyfriend <laughs> has been nothing more than a scathing leech on everyone in his life since I've known him. Jobless, penniless, couch cruising from SO's family members until he's worn out his welcome and constantly dodging any and all responsibility and claiming himself the victim no matter what. With that out of the way, the latest escapade. Here's the cast, a uh, significant other's little sister, Jill, little sister's boyfriend, Jock. Jack was sick for a bit and having trouble staying at work and calling out a lot. 
serious enough for his HR to put him on FMLA. FMLA comes to a point for him to either extend it or go back to work. Jack decides to go back. Upon arriving at work, starts to feel sick again, calls out and while waiting for his relief to get there, emails his boss a resignation for him to effectively quit immediately. Of course, his job fires him. Meanwhile, Jill had missed out on a lot of work because Jack would refuse to go to the hospital or doctor without her coming with him. Jill gets fired. Jack at that point had been living with me for seven months as a roommate. I wasn't like the rest of my significant other's family. Jack was on the lease with me, so he was locked in and liable. Bill's all in my name, so I could cut and run if need be. I was sick of living with Jack. Never cleaned anything, no dishes, dusting, vacuuming, sweeping, picking up after himself, nothing. Two weeks before she lost her job, I ran the idea by Jill that she could take over my half of the lease for $50, move out of her mom's, and have her own place with no security deposits or anything. Just transfer all my crap to them. Clean cut. Wash my hands of the mess. Flash forward, Jill had been living there for a week, and I had moved all of my stuff out when she lost her job. She had allegedly been fighting with her boss on getting her pay stubs for the apartment application for weeks, but now that's out because no job. So I'm still tied to the lease. My significant other and I agreed to give them two-thirds the rent till they get jobs, thinking a month at most. This is already a book, so I'll skip a little crazy crap and get to the juice. Fast forward four weeks. My significant other and I had paid two-thirds rent and my significant other's mom paid a third. The apartment at that time had Jack, Jill, and one of Jack's friends living there. Everyone gets their stimulus checks on the 15th. Jack and his friend get their tax refunds. Jill gets a job. Jack's friend has had one. Jack is trying to get his job back to no avail. His boss called me, we're friends. It told me he'd never hire him again, and I told Jack this, didn't phase him. Told them that all expenses were on them for the remainder of the lease, end of June. I told all three of them. Significant other tells Jack and Jill. Significant other's mom tells Jack and Jill. Flash forward to yesterday. My significant other and I have been out of our old apartment for over two months. We've been living at significant other's mom's house to save up money to move out of state. It's been amazing being more or less on our own and away from all the drama. I have been asking Jack about bill money, seeing that they are now in my name and due date is coming up. No response. Jack and Jill show up to the house to grab some of Jill's stuff she left behind. Jack walks up to me working in the garage and asks, Have you paid your half of the rent yet? Uh, what? We told you four weeks ago that it was on you. Damn, we are screwed. We are straight screwed. Jack exits stage left. My feel when those three asshats had $5,800 between the three of them four weeks ago and don't have enough money to scratch up $770 for rent now. Wow. The dude straight up gets pissed, saying that we promised to pay for their expenses till the end of the lease, that they lost their jobs due to the Medela virus, that we were attempting to take advantage of him for being nice and allowing us to move out. I told him that I didn't know what we were gonna do. Significant Other ain't giving them anything. Significant Other's mom isn't either. As for me, my name is on the lease and rent is due today, so I don't know. Oh man, what happened? I need to know what happened. What are we gonna do? We're never gonna find out what happened. <laughs> Psych. Update 2. Offered to help my roommate. Now he wants me to pay all his expenses. So here's the update. Sorry to keep everyone waiting. Again, on mobile, so sorry for format issues. I also don't know how to link my original post. <laughs> After posting this, I decided to cut off the internet. 
Jack had been texting me that day, trying to tell me and my significant other that any and all discussions of the apartment should go through him and no one else. You know, the only person not paying to be there. He had messaged me for over an hour, leaving me on read. Within five minutes of me getting off the phone with the internet company, he texts me asking if I had paid the internet, when it's due, and how to reset the router. My significant other called and asked if I had cut off the internet, and I said yes. Significant other was getting food with their mom for Jill. They get back to the apartment to drop off said food, and Jill asks them if I had cut it off, and significant other said yes, and all three of them were laughing. Jill saying, Hopefully this will be a wake-up call. She could not have been further from the truth. I never messaged him back and turned off the message notifications so he couldn't see if I read them or not. He blew up my phone. Seven missed calls and multiple messages, saying, I thought we would be civil. That's some petty ass crap, bro. I waited a bit and told him that if he couldn't afford rent, he didn't need internet and that he had no control over my actions. Him saying, I don't need the electricity being arbitrarily turned off based on a decision made entirely on your own. I don't know where he comes up with this crap. Without any notice or sense of decency in discussing with or even notifying us. Like, really dude? Am I breaking the Geneva Convention by taking away your video, James? I'm not mad that you turned off the internet, it's that you did it without saying anything, and maybe I'm in the wrong in saying this, but I feel like you avoided even talking about it with me even afterwards. I responded with, The sense of decency has been entirely absent during this entire process. Breaking the lease is an option. I'm looking at all options that remove my involvement from the apartment. I'm saying that I want out. You don't have control over whether the electricity stays on or not. I'm telling you that it will stay off until my name is off the lease. And I don't feel the same. I don't think you have tried your best and that everything that I have done has been in my best interest to do so. I absolutely avoided you after disconnecting the internet. I know that you and Jack's friend both were extremely upset, so I gave you time to calm down. This is all snippets of a five hour long conversation, but he went on to talk about human decency and respect. I told him I was fed up and he got super defensive saying, fed up about what exactly? Me being sick and in incredible pain? Also, Jill was still paying a third until she lost her job. And what would have been better, potentially paying a thousand dollars in a lease break while also paying for two thirds so you don't have an eviction notice in an apartment you don't even live in, or being responsible for three thirds rent until July? Apparently we can add math to the list of things he cannot do. I responded with, you mean you going to the hospital multiple times a week begging for pain meds and then checking yourself out when they outright refuse? The 20 plus showers a day? The constant noise of dry heaving and screaming? Yeah, I was fed up with that. I understand and know that you were in genuine pain, but that takes a toll on everyone, not just you. If I knew that it would take you more than two months to get a job, I would have broken it when I moved out. Pay between $756 to $1,256 and be done. If I had stayed, it would have been $3,800 before bills, or what you were expecting, where we pay two-thirds until the end of the lease. That's $2,560 plus whatever you can't cover. The cheapest route was and still is breaking the lease, but that would be inhumane. 1. I have already told you that I was exploring any and every possible avenue for getting my name off of the lease. 2. You didn't and don't need to know about it. 3. It only takes one signature from one resident to break it. I feel like that you've been acting like this is affecting others and that you don't care. Between you, Jill, and Jack's friend, you had at minimum $2,400 three weeks ago, and two of you have jobs. How did you all spend more than $2,000 in less than a month? 
This whole scenario has taken its toll on you, me, Jill, significant other, significant other's mom, my dad, and probably even Jack's friend too. I know that it isn't just me and significant other, but it seems like we're the only ones who are going to care about us. He blew up, saying, I do need to know about it because it would make me homeless. Case in point of not considering others. I even tried helping the kid, asking if I did break the lease, would it be my fault? A bit back and forth of him saying it would absolutely be my fault and a horrible thing to do, no human decency, the whole nine. Ending with, well, I suppose it is my fault that I didn't know that it only took one person to break a lease that had two signers on it. And I sincerely mean that. I told him that it was crazy how he will pull the pin and jump on every grenade he can to cry victim and to have a nice night. Of course, he had to get the last words in by quoting some of my texts at me and I left it alone. The next day, I talked to the leasing office and explained everything. The night before, they had $500 to put towards rent, but now only had $320. Hmm. It costs $175 to open up a new internet account with crappy credit around here, and I guess $5 for a Happy Meal. I told the office that, she laughed. I told her that any and all money was coming from them alone. If they were behind or not paying, to let me know and that I'd be breaking a lease. I also typed up a legal notice stating that under no circumstances would I renew or open up a new lease there in the next 12 months, because I guarantee Dirtbag would do that to me. I haven't heard from him since. Since then, Jill has gotten a second job, and Jack has an interview today to try to get on at Jill's second job. Of course, because he has to be stuck up Jill's ass constantly. It only took him three months since he's gotten better to get a job. Jill has come over a few times to get away from Jack and told me Jack was trying to psych up Jack's friend to come meet with me man to man the night all of that went down. Or more like man and man to man. That's then the end of this series. In the end, the Shire was fine, and Bilbo and Frodo floated off with the elves and all was happy in Middle Earth. The end. What a ridiculous story with ridiculous people. I mean, the story itself was pretty good, but the, the stuff that happens in it, ridiculous. The freaking audacity these choosing beggars have to request someone to pay for their living. Moochers, the lot of them. Also, I'm really proud of <laughs> how I read that last bit. I like that. Thank you for sharing, Opie. Good story. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.